In this part, we will have a look at how to use email templates and how they are structured. Here are all the pre-made, ready-to-go templates that we ship with Document Output. The only thing that you might want to do is edit the content to match it more closely to your company's unique profile. First, let's open a template for a commonly used document, the sales invoice. The first number of fields here are the general fields. The template is tied to a specific Business Central report, and in our case here, we see that it's tied to S invoice, as expected for an invoice. One of the really interesting fields is the template variant field number. This allows us to filter on any of these fields for automatic selection for a differently customized version of the invoice email, as we often do not want to send identical messages to all recipients or in all circumstances. We can do the same using dimensions, such as these, which are also commonly used filters for automatic applications of different customizations. Going further, we find a section of fields where we can determine how the tool should fetch, prioritize, and apply recipient email addresses. We can also set up which senders we want to present in the dispatched email, and from where these should be fetched. The remaining fields are some of the more specialized ones that have more unique use cases. There are a few of them I would like to point out here in this presentation. First is the signed PDF section, which is where you would enter the credentials for the use of third-party authenticated certificates. These are certificates applied to the attached PDF files, and it is a service provided by independent third parties that you must sign up for separately. The main purpose is to track whether a file might have been tampered with on its way from sender to recipient. Next, we see where we can set up whether the template should fetch files for attaching from the document header, document lines, or both. Under advanced, we can set a password that will need to be entered at the recipient end in order to open the attached document. This is also where we can enter a file storage path or activate a logging feature, along with setting a time frame for how long we need to store the log. All the way to the right, we find the fact boxes. The one at the top will show the priority list from where document output should fetch recipient email addresses. Next fact box will display attachments associated with a selected template line. And the last one will show the log entries for email sent using the selected template line. So what is a template line? The settings we've viewed so far are the overarching ones governing the way a template fetches data and adds features. The template line is where we manage the actual content of the emails that we want to send. This is also where we set up variations of the base template. For a deep dive into template lines, please view the template line video, also part of this series. Thank you for watching.